We must be, it, it doesn't matter what he is, is calling us to, his ways and, and, and how he operates. We must be willing to receive these ways. The Bible says that his ways are not like our ways, right? right? The Bible says that his standards are not like our standards, right? That his standards are as high as the heaven is to the earth. And his ways are as high as the heaven is to the earth. That, that we don't have the same mentality as God. Amen. That, that we don't know. That, that we should ever know completely the ways of God. They're for God to, to know. And for us not to question what he is doing in our lives. You know, I've witnessed and I've seen over the years, many walk away for multiple reasons. And, and I don't know if it's fair to say or not, but, but, but I like to say many walk away for ridiculous reasons. Amen. Wow. Amen. They walk away for, for offenses. They walk away because they've been stepped on, because they feel as if they've been abused, because they, 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 they don't receive or, or they can't, they, they don't understand the teachings or, or, or the methods or, or what God is trying to do inside their lives. And, and I've always said, and I, and I believe with all of my heart that, that who God has has placed inside of this church is not by chance or, or coincidence no. that, that God has planted you here to grow. Amen. God has planted you here to mature. Amen. God has planted each and every one of us and has called each and every one of us for purpose and destiny. Amen. You know, Christ lays a foundation for our lives. Christ lays fundamentals for us to live by. Right? When he was on this earth, this is what he did. Was he laid a foundation for the people. Laid a foundation for the disciples. And you look in the scripture and he lays a foundation for us. <laughs> Fundamentals to live by how to maintain the salvation or the gift of salvation that he has given to us. It's the treasure in the field. Wow. Amen. Bible says that the man found a hidden treasure in the field. And he, out of the joy that, that he had, he, he goes back and sells everything that he has and, and goes to buy the field. Come on. And it's how to enter the kingdom of heaven. Not everything is established. Not everything that is written is easy that Christ has shared with us, church. Nor did Christ ever say or intend that it would be. A lot of times, the things that, that Christ would teach and the things that Christ would share were, were radical. They were, they were beyond imagined to some people. I mean, who could imagine that, that, that Christ would share that if you want to be my disciple, you must hate your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, even your own life. Take up your cross and follow me. That's why many didn't follow. Because of the harsh teachings, the harsh sayings, the things that, that, that he was laying for, for our lives. Not everybody could accept what he was doing inside of their lives. Not everybody could appreciate just the simple things, the fundamentals. Not everybody could apply these things for their lives. Christ's scenes were hard. 
Because they brought conviction. They speak to the heart. They make you think about where I'm at inside of my life. What am I doing at this very moment? Where am I at in my spiritual life? Am I pursuing the kingdom of heaven? Or am I just living out my life day to day? Mm. His teachings searched out our lives. And they continue to search out our lives. They test our loyalty and our faithfulness. And the words that Christ shared dealt with the sin that was deep embedded within us. It speaks to the inmost parts of us. The Bible says that the word of God is like a double-edged sword. It knows every intent of the heart and every thought, every motive inside of our lives. It deals with our self-will. Deals with our mindset. How we think things should be or how we think that God is. We don't receive the message of the gospel like, like this man did. We come with a mentality. We come with how God should be. That's right. And how, how God cannot touch certain parts of my life. Now we keep things hidden from him. How we hold on to things within us that we don't want no one else to see, no one else to know. This man understood the treasure that he found, the gift of salvation. This treasure was only the surface though. It was only the surface, and we're, we're only touching the surface if you're only living on salvation. You're only touching the surface of what God has for you. You're not taking in the full gospel, the message. We're not receiving the full word of God as he has intended it for us. The true treasure was within the field. And he knew that I have found this, this treasure in this field. That there is, there is much more in here to be found. So much more that, that I'll sell everything. I'll give everything away for this field. For what the kingdom of heaven actually has for me. What God has intended for my life. He understood the value. It's more than just the treasure. It was a piece of who God was. It, it was the beat of God's heart. It was the breath of God speaking into his life. It's the hidden things, the forgotten things. It's the relationship with God to know him. However he might come to us. We, we come with, with simple minds. And we want to put God in a box. We want to confine him to this space which we believe that he should be in. And we only bring him out when it is necessary. That's right. The gospel is not something that we should understand everything right away. The reason for purchasing the field was to spend a lifetime in this field. The reason for giving everything up was that I am willing to sacrifice everything to know God. Yeah. However God might come to me, whatever I might find, whatever it might deal with within my life,
It's a process. It takes time. It doesn't come right away. We can't understand everything right away. It's growth. Years and years of learning. We must be teachable. We must be open. Yeah. It can only be understood through revelation and, and, and God's Holy Spirit spoken into our lives. It comes through fasting. It comes through praying. It comes through reading, searching out the scriptures. Wanting to know God. All these things together bring understanding for our lives. Bring purpose for our lives. Show us the plans of God for our lives. Show us the will of God. Show us the path. Show us the light. The Bible says it in Psalms that, that, that the word of God is like a lamp unto our feet. It's a light preparing a path for us. It's the path of the will of God. God doesn't work within a box, church. This is not how he works. He does not work within the mindset of man. He doesn't think like we think. His ways aren't like our ways. The things that he does is far from the way that we would intend for things to be. Amen. He has purpose for our lives. And, and, and the thing is, is we should never want God to be the way that we are. We should never want God to move the way that we think he should move. We shouldn't want him to be like that. This is a perfect God with a perfect will, perfect in all of his ways. I know for me that the way that I think sometimes, it, it, I, I, would, I would be in awe if, if, if God spoke to me and said that, that your ways are right, that, that my ways are right. That the things that I do are always right. That, that my heart is always right. Only through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only through Christ and Christ alone. That's right. We must understand these things as well as it's our duty to search out these things. It's our duty to search out the heart of God. It's our duty to search through this field and to want to know who God really is. No matter what the cost, no matter what it's going to take, no matter what it challenges for your life, Paul talks about searching out the mysteries of God or the hidden things. Mm. First Corinthians chapter two, verse four through nine says, and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and the power of and, and of power that your faith should not be in wisdom of men but in the power of God however we speak wisdom among those who are mature yet not the wisdom of this age not the mindset of men nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Amen. Which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. 
Well, you know, Christ never taught anything new. Jesus' method of teaching were solemnly and solely to re redirect the people back to God. This was the purpose of Christ, to bring the religious, the tradition. All these people who had drifted so far away from God, back to God. Amen. He was showing them God in the flesh. He was showing them that I am the word. I am the living word. I am here right now showing you how you must conduct yourself, how you must act, how you must live. Amen. The Bible says that through Christ we are reconciled back to God. Yeah. It means that we are brought back to God. Sin has separated us from God. But because of Jesus Christ, we have a way back to God. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says that God made him who knew no sin to be sin that through him we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. When we read the scriptures, we think that that, that Christ was doing something new. It's because we lack understanding of what God was actually doing. The church and how, how we perceive the Messiah to be. Just like the religious in the day of, of Jesus. That the Messiah should be one way. And because Jesus wasn't the way that they perceived God to be, they rejected him. They pushed him away. They cast him out. He was not accepted and therefore crucified. Come on. The religious did these things. And you, you look at today's day and age in the church and and we've become religious. We have become traditional. We perceive a, 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 a God to be a certain way. And if somebody tells you that he's not that way, it's like everything that we ever knew, the mindset that we had, the, the way that we think that God should be in the box is no more. That, that these teachings are, are nothing that I've ever heard before. How can I understand? Paul says clearly. The mysteries, the hidden wisdom with God. It's nothing new. Christ was just here to, to reestablish. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 through 19. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For as truly as I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law Till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great wow. in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Here Jesus speaks specifically of not changing nothing. Amen. On the contrary, if you look, in Hebrew, the word jot it is the smallest letter in the Hebrew alphabet, and it's the yod, and it means that even the smallest, even the most minute thing will not be changed. Come on, come on. This whole Hebrew roots movement, it, it's, it's not a, a movement. It's a, a God movement. It's God's Holy Spirit redirecting the church back to God. Amen. 
Church tradition is what is separating us from God. Come on. You know, we can get traditional. We get religious real quick. We just go through the motions. We're just doing things just because we have to. Right. Obligation. There, there's no heart. There's no desire to know who he actually is or, or, or what he actually wants or is intended for our lives. Mom. That's where we snuff our noses at, at, at the feast teachings and, and all these things that, that are specifically God. Come on. You know, the same thing happened in Jesus' day. That's right. Tradition superseded the law. Tradition superseded God. That's right. That's exactly where we are today. And when these things are exposed, many will take offense to it. Because their own perceptions, their own mindsets of who God was supposed to be have all changed. Right? right? Whether it be once saved, always saved, that grace passes over everything, yeah. religion, conforming to the things of this world, all these things have an impact on the church. Yeah. They hinder what God is really trying to do within the church. How God is really trying to move within your lives. How God is really trying to make disciples, men and women. Right. How God is, is trying to bring deliverance yeah. over, over the things that we're going through. How he wants to change every thought process inside of us. Right. You look in... Uh, Luke 22, verse 20. The Bible says, Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Amen. And many say, well, well, what about the new covenant? Huh. What about these things that, that, that Jesus said himself? Is this not new? Is this not God doing something new? Well, well we read from a, a, a literal English translation, and which came from the Greek translation, but Christ spoke in Hebrew when he spoke. Yes. And if we start to read or understand what he was saying in Hebrew, the Hebrew word... There's a word in there that, that, that means it's Kadesha yeah. or, or Kadesh, and, and which actually means renew or renewing. So it's not a new covenant, but it's a renewed covenant, a reestablished covenant, right? A renewing covenant with the people which had been lost because of religion. Wow. The blood is nothing new. It talks about it. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 18 through 22. Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people, according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water, scarlet wool, and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people saying this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you then likewise he sprinkled the blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry according to the law almost all things are purified with blood and without blood without the shedding of blood there is no remission for sins See, it's not new but those who don't know, those who don't understand the methods, they don't understand that, that it's a renewed covenant. 
that the things being taught become foreign to you. The things being taught become unethical and offensive to you. They become radical or, or this is just not God. How can it be God? God is new. God is doing things new. That we're, we're saved by grace through faith. And yes, the Bible says that we're saved by grace through faith. But, but the instruction has not changed. And the instruction is there for our lives. I want to read one more thing to you real quick. In uh, John chapter 6. Verse 53. Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat of my flesh, uh, unless you drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. And he, he who eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he feeds on me who will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. Amen. These things he said in the dog, and he taught in Capernaum. Amen. Therefore, many of the disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying, who can understand it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said, does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? Then it goes on. That he goes on after the disciples walked away. That he asks Peter and the twelve if they should leave him also. And Peter's answer to him, where, where, where do I go? The thing is, church, is that, that when we begin to hear something that we don't understand or that challenges our lives, begins to challenge who we are, we want to reject it. We don't want to accept the teachings. And, and we begin to question. We don't understand. And the thing is, is it's either the whole gospel or it's no gospel. You can't pick and choose how you want God to be and how you don't want God to be. Where I want him to deal with my life or how I want him to work inside of my life and where I don't. We can't hide things or hold things back. God, we need to accept God the way that he is, the way that he's coming to us, the way that he's speaking into our lives, how he wants to transform us, how he wants to change us, what he wants to do for us. Amen. You know, you look, and Jesus, he didn't explain himself. He let him walk away. Her heart was never in it. If you're not going to accept the the you're, you you, you want to stick by my side, the good things that I teach, and then the harsh things, the things that you don't understand, the things that are contrary to what you've been taught or what you believe, then yeah. then you walk away. Well, well, then you walk away. Well, am I going to run after every single person who walks away from me? Because every single person walked away from Jesus. Right, come on. Yeah. Every single person. He had multitudes who would come and they would walk away. He had disciples who would come and they would walk away. You look at the end and, and not many were stuck by his side. Come on. Amen. You know, I like to say that the 12 were cut from a different cloth. Yes. Or at least the 11, right? Yes. <laughs> they were cut from a different cloth. There's few. That's why he says many are few. Or, or, or many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. Not many stuck by his side. 
A lot, of, a lot of people made excuses. A lot of people walked away. A lot of people couldn't receive him for who he was. Amen. The disciples, they came open. They came teachable. They didn't come with a, a mindset in the way that he, he should be. Or, or what everybody said how he was supposed to be. They came understanding and knowing that this is the Messiah. I, Peter says, where, 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 where will I go? Where am I going to go? I'm here. When everybody else walks away, they leave the church because of whatever, I'm here. I'm, I'm staying here. I want to know God. I want what God has for my life. Mm -hmm. This is the mentality that we need. Is that it's not just about the treasure, it's about the field. Amen. It's about the kingdom of heaven. Amen. It's about souls. It's about people changing. Amen. It's about deliverance. It's about Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on. Our old ways, our old mentality, our old mindset, they, they blind us. Right. And we must surrender these things. Yeah. You know, harsh sayings, they'll come. But it's accepting them. It's praying about things. Learning to, to be open to change. Amen. And only then, only then, will you see that the kingdom of heaven here on earth the miraculous power of God moving inside of your life. Amen. You know, in closing tonight, I want to share with you that, that Jesus loves you. Amen. And that he will move in your life in such a way that, that, that only God can do. It's not, not, not with the power of man or, or, or the perception of how you think that he should move. It's only through the power of God, the Amen. power of his Holy Spirit. What he wants to do is, is beyond imagine. If, if I could tell you, I, I never understood or seen what God had for my life. And, and now that I see it's beyond my imagine what, what I could ever dream that I would become. And it's all because of Jesus. All because of Jesus. Amen. But if we all bow our heads tonight, I want to open up this altar, church. God wants to transform you. God wants to change you. God wants to help you. And it, and it starts right here at this altar. It starts with just saying, God... I don't want to be this man that, that, I, that I used to be. I don't want to be this woman that, that I used to be. I want to surrender everything to you. I want to give up all because I know that, that you're a provider.
about the scriptures. It's about prayer. It's about building a relationship. It's about discipleship. It's Amen. about all these things. Paul talks about searching out the hidden things. That's what it's about. We can't come with the mindset and how we think God should be, but, right. but we allow God to move how God wants to be. Amen. I want to encourage you to, to read. The Bible talks about Bereans searched out, they studied. Scripture says, study to show thyself. Um, I hope that you're blessed. I hope yeah. that you read the scripture, search them out. Pray yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Growth inside of this church. Yes. I know that there is so much potential in each and every one of our lives. Amen. Help me to pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come before you this evening thanking you for your word. Praying, Lord God, that, that we would never get in this, this mentality or this mindset that, that, that you should be a certain type of way. But we know, Lord God, that, that you move in the most miraculous ways, Lord God. And so we, we trust in that, and we believe in that, Lord God. We pray that you would build the church, Lord God, and that you would help us, Lord God, to see all that you have for each and every one of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, give us traveling mercies. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.